Pepper says, are you ready to clean out that refrigerator and freezer? I know I am. With Thanksgiving right around the corner, we are going to be getting into this kitchen because I'm hosting it again this year. I haven't hosted it since 2019, and I want to get this kitchen ready beforehand. I'm normally scrambling to clean this, but for the most part, it's looking really good. And it's a beautiful fall day. The kids are playing outside if you can see them, but we're going to start cleaning now. So for today, we're gonna to be focusing on cleaning out the refrigerator and the freezer. We clean out the fridge in the beginning of the year, but not the freezer. So we're going to tackle both of them for this episode. And I also want to say that this video is dedicated to Rebecca Madison. She is the one that left a message a few weeks ago saying, oh, you should do a holiday cleaning out your fridge and your freezer. And I thought, what a fantastic idea. This is something that I need to do a couple weeks before Thanksgiving, not the night before when I'm in a mad, mad rush. So this video is dedicated to you. Thank you for the idea. Now, I've been giving you a quick tour of what's in the fridge right now. Not too bad, but definitely things that we have to go through. And then we're going to go through the freezer. Now, I can tell you it's been definitely well, well over a year since we've gone through the freezer. It might be two years. So it's really important to get in here and clean it all out. Now, this past week, I've been doing a freezer challenge and believe it or not, we used a lot of food in here because this freezer was jam packed. And at this point, I think it's more of an unorganized state right now because there's definitely some empty boxes and packaging that are just sitting in here. Another big thing is I'm trying to check is for dates. That's why I was doing the freezer challenge. Anything that has an expiration date coming up, I really wanted to use. And plus these popsicles, I loved these as a kid. Unfortunately, mine do not. So we're going to let this go. I also started meal planning so that I know what we're going to have for dinner every day. So I wanna use up the food that we have in the fridge and the freezer first. In a time of inflation and when your grocery bill seems to be tripling, it's best to have a plan and not fall into anxiety and not fall into panic. I don't wanna go back to that anymore. We can take control, we can make a plan, we can meal plan, we can organize our fridge and get rid of stuff that's expired in 2020. <laughs> I just want to be aware of these emotions and share them with all of you because when I get into anxious and stress and panic, that is when the hoarding is triggered and I do not want to go back to that. And I have to admit that I definitely had an aha moment with cleaning. We had a conversation before about how many of you, it's actually stress relieving when you guys clean. It's when you're feeling anxious or something's going on. You go have that burst of energy and clean. And when you have cleaned, it's released that stress. You feel good, you feel so much better. And I can finally resonate with that so that cleaning is now a positive experience instead of a negative one. With my ADHD and my hoarding disorder, cleaning felt like such torture. My hoarding, as you all know, has what kept me safe when I was stressed and anxious and upset. My hoard is what self-soothed those emotions. So when it was time to clean, my ADHD was like, no, 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 we'd have no desire to clean because we're going to bring up all those emotions. We're gonna feel bad. We're going to avoid it. The messes can stay put because what made my heart thrive was taking my boys on little adventures ever since they were babies. That was where my heart was the happiest, and it still is. But now, 
I don't have to avoid cleaning, and I don't have to feel like cleaning is sacrificing my time with them either. That was another huge block in me. And for my entire past, I never took the time to even process any fears, anxieties, or past traumas. I just suppressed those emotions so I wouldn't feel them. So of course, they had to come out somehow, and that was through hoarding. And by not cleaning was another form of avoidance. I didn't want to even begin to start that process, so I avoided it. Another thing is that I do have a lot of energy. It could be from my ADHD. It could be something that I just naturally have. But at all times in my waking moments, I have a lot of energy and the need to be consistently moving. And since I was constantly moving, that energy was either in a happy state or an anxious state. And in my past, when it was in that anxious state and I needed to release these bursts of energies that I was having, it took on physical hoarding, a shopping addiction, and also forms of emotional eating. Now, I'm going to pause for a moment because if you have a squirmish tummy, look away right now for the next <laughs> minute. We did find two pieces of rotten food, which honestly is amazing progress to our past where half the fridge was rotten. And I just wanted to point that out in case anyone's tummy is squirmish. This part is almost done and we'll continue the conversation. Now that we got past the icky stuff, let's continue the convo. Now, those were my three main bad habits when it was related to stress and anxious and all that pent up energy. It was the hoarding, the shopping addiction, and some emotional eating. Now, I still had healthy coping mechanisms too to release that energy, which was walking, dancing, and crafting and drawing and being artistic. Those are more positive coping mechanisms to release all that energy. What I'm doing is just adding another tool to my little therapy workbox, if you will, because instead of hoarding, instead of emotionally eating, and instead of impulse shopping, we're going to be releasing that energy in a form of cleaning. And I can do that now because I've recovered enough in that past trauma that we're decluttering, we're reconditioning our nervous system, that decluttering is safe. And that opens up that emotion of, okay, we can clean because now cleaning is also safe. And now we can attach a stigma that cleaning can also be satisfying. And if it's satisfying, then my brain is releasing all those feel-good chemicals like dopamine. And to the ADHD brain who is consistently seeking that dopamine level, it's going to keep me in focus from start to finish. And that is why some ADHD people are either super clean, almost OCD cleaning, and why some of us ADHDers are more messy and unorganized. Many of us have the same diagnosis, such as ADHD and also hoarding disorder, but because we're individuals with different past life experiences, different behaviors were formed since childhood and carried into adulthood. So that's why it can look so different between us. And honestly, this applies to everyone. It doesn't matter if you have a diagnosis of some sort. Everyone has had a past experience. Everyone has developed these behaviors into adulthood to cope with the stresses of life. That goes to why somebody wants to be a minimalist, why someone would want to hoard or just hold on to more things that they need to. I just wanted to point out that we all have more similarities than we think. And I also feel like by pointing that out, it brings us closer together. And the good news is that behaviors can be changed and altered for the good. 
It just takes time. It just takes baby steps. It just takes reconditioning your nervous system that you are still safe. Because now I can be in a space where I feel so good about this. It felt good cleaning the refrigerator. I felt so proud of myself that I can now do this with ease. I also didn't put myself down with feeling ashamed for having any type of rotten food or mess again because I've been working through that past trauma, releasing it. I can give myself grace that we're doing it. It looks good. We're not gonna stop. We can be happy and content in the space we are. Instead of feeling guilty that I am letting go of this food because it's past its expiration date, I can look at it that, wow, what we're getting rid of fits on my countertop where before it was my entire floor. So I can see the progress that we're making along the way. There's no need to feel ashamed about it because we are showing signs of improving and we'll continue that. And as we enjoy the beautiful fall weather and all of its traditions and holidays, I'm happy to say that the fridge and the freezer are ready for a beautiful Thanksgiving feast for my family members. And I'm looking forward to finally have these stress free holidays with my family so that I can truly be in the moment with them, creating wonderful new memories.